Come on, Susie. We moved her mattress and there were bugs all over the place. They had crawled inside of this tent from the top, from the floor as well. Hey everyone, it's Susan and Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review and we are ready for bed in the Gazelle. We are out on an adventure and we're going to do two nights in the Gazelle tent. Two nights at Lone Wolf Mountain. Now here's the forecast everyone. Tonight it's going to be rather calm and warm. Like right now it's about 65 degrees. It is hot inside of this tent. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe I'm broken. What do you think? It is pretty warm. We have all the windows open and the doors open for air and we have a fan. So we will see how the night goes. But if there's no breeze, I think it will get hot. Maybe wet inside of this. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Tomorrow morning, we have rain, thunderstorms coming into the area. And supposedly it's going to be like on all day long. I don't know if that's true. You know how it goes here in the mountains. But nonetheless, it should be a good waterproof test for this tent. With this episode, we are primarily focusing on the gazelle tent. Everyone raves about this, and there's also a large group of people that just want to know what the fuss is about because they haven't taken the plunge to get one. So that's what we're here to find out, and we're going to check on condensation. It is very roomy, so I can say yeah. right off there's plenty of room for two people, plenty of room for three people in here, and this is the TX3 gazelle tent. Already I've done a waterproof test with this tent and unfortunately in a way it passed it but then again it failed. The tent did leak but it was in a crazy knockdown thunderstorm like winds around 50 miles an hour. Super rainy, super wet. Yeah it leaked but in those conditions I think just about any tent would have leaked. So this is just an additional test. So we're waterproof testing it. We're testing it out for condensation and at the same time Susie is testing this out for our female viewers because it's one thing for a big strong guy to set up this tent which is heavy and it's something else for a little lady a little kitty like <laughs> Susie so let's just do this real quick what are your initial impressions based upon setting this up today what do you think I am really on the fence about this tent I'm not a hundred percent sold that it's worth the price we got to Lone Wolf Mountain earlier today and I was the one that set up the tent and I did it all by myself. And this thing is big. I could do it, but I also felt like I was lugging something around. It's not something you just take out of your car and carry very easily. So I did have that feeling of like lugging it, um, maybe struggling slightly, maybe just being awkward because it was my first time setting up a tent like this. It is a pop-up tent per se, but it's not like a pop-up tent that I've used before. So you kind of have to get used to how it pops up. It is easy, I will say that, yeah. even though it was a little awkward and maybe I struggled just a little bit, just getting it in the position that I wanted it to be in. So I don't know, I'm on the fence. I'm not super impressed with like quality. I saw a lot of holes, a lot of loose threads. There is a misconception when it comes to this T3 Gazelle tent, and that is that you can stand up in it. A lot of people think that, and it's simply not true. I'm about 5'6", and I cannot stand up. Even directly in the center of the tent, I'm not standing up fully. Now, with that being said, there's plenty of space. I can move around, but those measurements are not accurate to what the website for Gazelle states. It's unfortunate, but the company overstates the height of this tent by about four inches, which is quite a bit. And the reason that we're talking about this is because we've received, I don't know, dozens of emails from people saying, hey, you should check out the Gazelle. I'm interested in the small version because I can stand up in it and it's not too big. Most people are not going to be able to stand up in this tent. Now, I think we should stop there. 
Let's get some sleep. It's getting late. Susie and I have had a good dinner here at Lone Wolf Mountain. It's been just so peaceful listening to the owls and the coyotes. Man, it's nice. It's a nice, nice night. But anyways, we're going to get some sleep. We will see you all early in the morning. What is going to happen with like the next two nights with the gazelle? Right. We're going to see if this tent is really worth it. It's a tent that I thought we could take across the country. You know, it could be an option when you don't want to stay in your vehicle and you want like a pop-up shelter, but I don't know. I don't yeah. know. We're just going to have to test it out. So two nights in the gazelle. Here we go. Starts now. Yeah. Good night, everybody. See you in the morning. Good night. As an update, everyone, it is now 11, 12. It's 66 degrees outside and it's raining. So this tent for the most part has been sealed up. The vents are slightly open, as open as possible, but it is stifling in here. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, everyone, we have this. Does that feel good? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As far as the time goes, it is 8.30 in the morning. It was a good night, a quiet night. It did rain some, but not a whole lot. Nice and quiet this morning, peaceful. It's not too warm. 61 degrees. I guess that's kind of warm, but Susie's in the tent. She's getting ready. I'm making coffee. We're getting the day underway. Perfect timing, Kitty. The water is ready. That is perfect timing. I am ready for my coffee. How is it? Mm. Oh, so good. My friends, cheers. Susie, 
Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> How'd you sleep, Susie? And what did you think about the gazelle tent? I slept okay last night. It was a pretty warm night. Definitely noticed a lot of condensation inside of that tent. Unfortunately, the airflow is terrible. I'm not happy about that, and I need about four cups of this before I'm going to be awake and probably in a good mood. <laughs> One thing that we noticed was that after it stopped raining, we were able to open up all of the vents again. The mesh at the vents is so thick and like it's so tightly woven that very little air actually comes through it. It would take a substantial wind gust to actually move some air inside of that tent. And because of that, we woke up this morning and the walls were soaked. Another problem that we are having is that we kept finding bugs inside of the tent. With the first spider that we found, we were like, okay, maybe it came in when we did. Then there was like some sort of flying insect. And the second spider that we saw, we actually saw coming into the tent. So at the very top, there's this hole. And basically it's how you raise the roof and also break it down. And that hole is fairly large. And it's surprising to me that the company hasn't done something to narrow that because it was large enough for that full-size spider to crawl into the tent, which is a shame. Now, we've heard of other issues when it comes to bugs getting inside of that tent, namely with the floor, because the floor is basically Velcroed to the walls. It's very interesting. We haven't noticed any bugs coming through the floor, but we haven't removed it yet either. That is something that's going to be a weak point for this tent because we've heard from others that's where bugs come through. I don't know if they've ever removed it. I have no plans ever to take that thing out. Taking it out, that's going to be easy. Putting it back in, that's going to be difficult because I don't think I'd be able to get it back together that well again. You know, at the end of the day, it's Velcro. And so you have to keep in mind, like, the more you take that apart, it's going to get worn there's the issue that debris could get caught in it, and you're never going to get that perfect seal again with the Velcro. You're right. Now this is interesting everyone. The Storm Prediction Center says there's a risk of severe weather in our area within the next 24 hours. The forecast from last night said rain by like 7 a.m. today. That didn't happen. Now they're saying it's going to be later on. It was funny, like on Instagram the other day, someone asked me like, why are all of your adventures in the rain? That's because it's always raining. If we waited for nice weather, to have adventures, we wouldn't be having very many. So now we just go with it, go out and see what happens. Now, everyone, this looks incredible. Susie, what do you have here? We made avocado toast with eggs and salt and pepper. Very simple. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you. <laughs> I'm starving. How about you? I am hungry. 
<laughs> we could act like this is piping hot, but that's really not the case. Like when it comes to filming, it's like we do so many different angles and we're, you know, constantly trying to show things. So like by the time we actually sit down to eat, most of the time it's cold, sometimes it's burned. <laughs> Just a little bit of honesty for you all, you know? It's like you're trying to film one thing while something else is on the back burner, literally, so. <laughs> it's like making that cup of coffee and just having to stare at it and wait yeah. and wait and wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm hmm I love that. Mm. It's warm. Mm hmm mm hmm Lukewarm. It's good, though. It's really good. If you've never tried avocado toast with eggs, please try it. A little bit of salt, pepper. Mm hmm you can even do like garlic salt. It's fantastic. Yep. As far as the weather goes, it is now beginning to cloud up a little bit. It's getting dark. As far as the temp goes, it's about 68 degrees. It's pretty warm. Every once in a while, there's a breeze that comes through here. Just giving you a taste of like what's to come. So what is coming through is a powerful cold front. So like today it's like 70 degrees, tomorrow it's 50 degrees, Saturday the high is like 34 degrees, and then like the next day it's back into like the 50s and 60s. Crazy spring weather. The last time I was out on a trip we actually came to the cabin and stayed the night. It was great to finally get out after all of my shoulder rehab that I had been doing, and I am completely back to normal. I'm very happy about that. As for other stuff I've been doing, since our kids are out of the house, we have been taking the past few months and we've been doing repairs, maintenance, and a few fun upgrades. It's always kind of nice as empty nesters to kind of redo your house and, you know, fix it how you want it to be just for the two of us. So that's been fun to do. Yeah. It's also a lot of work, so I've kind of been handling that end of stuff. Every time I've thought about doing a trip or planning a trip, it's all been about trying to work around the weather. Even though our winter has been mild, there's been some cold temps and I definitely prefer getting out when it's warmer. This weather feels great. These temps are incredible. Even at nighttime, it was incredible last mm. night. And I definitely like that the best if I'm gonna go out and do a trip. Last night, we're inside of the tent. It's like 66 degrees outside. Inside of that tent, it's got to be like 75, 80. I'm just like, I am so hot. I'm like sweating my brains out. And Susie's over there. She has like a fleece jacket on. And like, she's just snug. <laughs> she's loving it. It's pretty funny. I'm like, I think I'll go outside and sleep on the ground, on the wet ground. <laughs> what is it that they say about women? Like when they go to sleep, they go to like thermonuclear meltdown mode or something or other. It's absolutely true. I think we like hibernate or something, something strange like that. Cause I felt really comfortable. And it's interesting. I can be out when it's like 40 degrees mm -hmm. and I will get so cold, mm -hmm. even though that's not really that cold. Just something about it. My hands will get really cold or something like that. And it's really hard to get warmed back up. So, you know, to be out in these temps, Sometimes it's miserable because you feel like humid and muggy, but at the same time, it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten cold at all on this trip. Yeah. Luckily, I had the fan inside of the tent, and I stayed nice and comfortable. If you can have just a little bit of airflow, it makes all the difference in the world. We have some viewers who sent us pictures of their gazelle tents. And one thing we noticed in one picture, this guy had a huge box fan in front of one of the windows. It makes perfect sense now. Like, you have to have airflow inside of that tent. And you have to have something powerful. Otherwise, you're going to be super hot. Mm-hmm. Here in a minute, I'll gather some firewood. We already started. We have a nice little pile over here. But I want to gather some wood so we can have a fire later on tonight. Might have to make some more coffee. What do you think? Definitely coffee. Yeah. Yeah. That's our love language right there. Coffee. Coffee. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing we have in common. The only thing. The only thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together for, uh, how long? <laughs> a long time, since yeah. we were in high school. So, alright. So about 22, 23 years. 
and all we have in common is coffee. Mm -hmm. We can make it work. You can too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> As I was gathering some firewood, I saw something that concerns me. Right there we have a tree that some woodpeckers have been tearing the hell out of. And I can see that this tree is now compromised. At the same time, now that I'm looking at it, this has been dead for a long time too. So take a look at that. You can see how the woodpeckers have been digging straight into that tree, looking for bugs, grubs, ants, and so on. As it stands right now, they're about halfway through this. And that means this tree eventually will come down. Looking at the tree, I could tell that it's going to fall this direction, away from the truck, away from the road. If the tree was going to fall towards the road or the truck, I would just go ahead and cut it down. But since it's not, I'll let it be, at least for now. As an update, folks, it's about noon. Susie and I, we've been hiking around the property here, just exploring some, talking about projects that we may do in the future. As we were hiking up here, Susie came across a black racer snake. Susie has good eyes because I walked right past it, didn't even see it, but she did. As you all can see, this is a fairly good sized racer. It's about four feet long, and the odds are I've seen him before out here. I think it was last year we saw one or two on the road. When it comes to the snakes here at Lone Wolf Mountain, the most impressive are the racers and the black rat snakes. The racers have thin bodies, long bodies like that, but the black rats, they have real python-like bodies. They could be like scary huge. Susie has no desire to see one of them and that's okay. She doesn't like snakes. Hi, hon. I dislike snakes, but I handle it a lot better now than I used to. And that's simply just because I've had more practice outdoors and I'm more used to all of the animals and critters that you can find in the woods. So while it's not my favorite thing and I don't want to come across one, I can handle it okay. The good thing about black snakes is that they will take care of any venomous snakes that are out here. Luckily, we don't have any here in this part of the world. We are super blessed, aren't we, Susie? We have no venomous snakes. We really don't have any mosquitoes or anything like that. It's just about perfect, to be honest. And our temperatures in the summertime rarely break 80 degrees. So we definitely live in a beautiful place and it's heaven. As an update, everyone, it just began raining. I don't think it's going to amount to much, but it's a good start. At least with this rain, it is bringing in some cooler temperatures. So earlier today, it got up to about 73. Now it's 68, so that's not too bad. We're about to make some coffee and then we're going to get a fire going since it feels so good. Cheers. Cheers. 
We talked a little bit about how unpredictable the weather can be earlier, and today is a fantastic example of that. We were all expecting inches of rain today. So we come out here yesterday, we start the trip, and so far it's been just sprinkles. So it's a good example of how you cannot count on the weather forecast, and you have to be prepared for everything and be adaptable. It's amazing everyone just how much it's cooled down. I mean we're not even that late into the day and it went from what like 74 or something like that. I'd say it's about I don't know 65 maybe a little bit lower. Plus there's a nice breeze so finally it's time for our fire. It's amazing how fast the day has gone. Already 720. 
<laughs> Temperature is dropping. It feels pretty good. We have the fire over here. Dinner is ready. This looks incredible. We have bison sloppy joe with some sesame sauteed broccoli. Oh yeah. Cheers everyone. Cheers Susie. Cheers. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with the broccoli. Okay. It looks like you're starting with the sloppy joe. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Just dig in. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love broccoli. Mm-hmm. Is the sloppy joe good? That is good. Mm. Bison is so lean. Oh, that's good. Does it remind you of a hot dog in South Dakota by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> We're in South Dakota, middle of nowhere. I'm not even sure what the name of that town was. We, we stop at this gas station and they have bison hot dogs. We go inside, they look great. We get to go outside, fix them up. I take a bite out of it and it is like eating a shoe. But Susie's over there just like, mm, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, it sure is. This is awesome. That's me being positive and that's you being oh. you. <laughs> Ouch. Not even being negative, just being myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. Uh, 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 that didn't hurt at all. <laughs> was it really that bad? That hurt pretty good. No, the hot dog. Oh, yeah, it was awful. <laughs> Since it was like $4, $5 each, yeah. I, I like the hot dogs that are like 25 cents. Like, if it's going to be bad, let it be cheap. Hot dogs were like two for a dollar when we were like kids. I remember a time where, because mm. I'm older than you, mm. they were 25 cents each. And you go and get the works 25 cents. Four for a dollar. Yeah. Wow. Like, dad and I with my brother and sometimes my grandma would take us. Go inside, spend a couple bucks, and you have hot dogs for days. Dang. <laughs> I'd like to know what kind of hot dogs they were. <laughs> I don't know if I want to know. I'm pretty sure like somebody died eating those and that's why they stopped doing that. Oh my gosh. Cause I mean, you remember like those like rotisserie wheel things, the hot dogs would just sit there and cook, cook all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how we just jump from one thing to the next? That's what it's like all day long. Our, our conversations are like jump, skip, hop, bounce. I still think that the hot dog wasn't bad. I know, you, you In South it. Dakota. I can actually play the footage. Check this out. All right, everyone, we stopped for a world famous buffalo hot dog. My question is, what part of the buffalo goes into the hot dog? I don't know. Who knows? With the Ford Transit van, did you know that it has a built-in hot dog holder? Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Look at that, Susie. It's perfect. These hot dogs are $4 each, so uh, they better be really, really good. All right, Susie, tell us how it is. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good? Mm -hmm. Worth $4? Mm. Mm -hmm. As you all could see from that riveting footage, she loved that hot dog. <laughs> and I was just being myself. Whatever that means. <laughs> that makes it sound like I'm negative all the time. Wow. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> mm. That is good. That is good. Today really has been nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, not too hot. Nice little breeze here and there. Susie and I, we've just been exploring Lone Wolf Mountain, talking about all the things that we plan to do to it. You all may have noticed in previous episodes, there's a piece of corrugated pipe up at the top. That is actually for a little project we plan to do right over here. Over here, we have a spring that comes right out of the bank, and it's a low flow. At one point in time, we tallied up how much it was. It was like maybe a gallon per minute. Pretty low flow, but either way, we are going to dam that up, cover it up, basically create a spring box, and we're going to use that piece of corrugated pipe. 
it's a very simple plan and it's not meant to be like a true spring box or anything like that. More than anything, we just want to be able to collect water and we could boil it after that point if we want to, something like that. So we've just been walking around, coming up with projects. This winter has been harsh on Lone Wolf Mountain. We've had a lot of strong wind, even though we really haven't had any snow. We've had a lot of wind, so there's a lot of trees down. There's a lot of debris that we need to pick up and it's also been very muddy, so the road could use a little bit of work as well. Yeah. We keep having to make our way around the fire to avoid all the smoke and the ash coming into our food. So I think for now we're gonna turn the camera off, enjoy our dinner, and we will bring you guys back later. All right, everyone, we are saying good night, and hopefully when we wake up, we will wake up to rain. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Come on, Susie. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. Did you get wet? Just a little bit. Not much. Ooh, it's damp this morning. It's cold, too. Chilly, chilly. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Susie, good morning. good morning. Good morning. Here's a little known fact. Susie and I don't talk to each other until we've had coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, just kidding. <laughs> As you all can see, it's raining away. It has rained all night long. It started around one or two, something like that, which was great to sleep in. Now, unfortunately, I can't say that we slept all that great. Like, I don't know, maybe two, three o'clock in the morning, Susie's like, honey, I just felt a bug. So we turn the lights on, we start looking around and there's like some little beetle thing crawling around. And it, like, we moved her mattress and there were bugs all over the place. They had crawled inside of this tent from the top, I think from the floor as well. So after that point, she was freaked out. <laughs> I, I think I ended up sleeping better than you, but that's not saying much. 
I'm not very happy this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, when it comes to the gazelle tent, that was something that we were alerted of. It's like, the tent is not bug proof. At the same time, we've spoken to people who've said they've never had any sort of issues. That confuses me because, I don't know, maybe there's a difference between the models, right? So we have like the three person version. Maybe there's a difference in terms of like bug proofness with like the four, five, and so on. That I can't comment on. I don't know. It's possible, but all of these tents share similar features. We chose the smallest and the most compact because it's a large size no matter what, so I didn't personally want anything larger to have to handle or deal with. So this is the smallest and most compact tent, but all of the models share the exact same features like the removable floor. But to be fair, we can't comment on the larger models. Now, it should be mentioned that Susie's the one who actually purchased this tent. That's true. I was really interested in it myself, and I've heard from a lot of female viewers asking about this tent. And I was curious and wanted to get it. But as of this morning, I'm ready to return it. <laughs> Are you going to return it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because, like, there's a part of me that really likes this tent. But then again, there's a part of me that just, like, absolutely hates this thing. I think what confuses me the most is how much people love it because like I do like it. I think certain aspects are impressive but like the issues that it has when you factor in the price are so great. I personally would not purchase this tent either. It just has too many flaws. Like yeah. deal breaking flaws. I think one of the biggest ones is like the doors. Like neither Susie and I are big people and it is difficult to get in and out of that tent. Right, I don't have any kind of mobility issues and I've tripped over the door several times. It also freaks me out that if there were beetle bugs or ants or whatever. Spiders. The, the bugs that we did see in there, it makes me worry about ticks and things like that because yeah. ticks are very small, so. And they're very prevalent in this area. I mean, you could take a white sheet and just drag it on the grass here and you'll come up with 20 or 30 ticks. They're everywhere. Yeah. And I know you may be thinking that I didn't give it enough time, but this was a multi-day trip. I've spent two nights in there. We're on the third day. I'm just not happy with it. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Just to wrap up our thoughts, I do plan to shoot a review on this tent just so I can, you know, kind of put everything in one video where it's very precise and kind of gets to the point real quick instead of just this, but just to go over some of the issues real quick. We've talked about the poor quality, I believe we talked about that. There's loose threads everywhere, there's holes all over the place. Some of the uh, seam work with like the stitching is some of the worst that I've ever seen. On the inside here, there is a wad of loose threads that are connected from one side of the tent to the other. I'd say it's about a quarter inch thick, thousands mm -hmm. of strands. I mean, it just looks like crap. The overall construction of this is very, very poor. Especially when you consider, like, the price of this. Again, this right. is the three-person. This is almost $400. $400. Yeah, it retails on the Gazelle website for $389. You can usually find it on sale for $299. But for myself, the value's not there for me. It's not a great camping experience. I can't even tell you 100% if this tent is leaking or just raining condensation on the mm. inside. Both mornings I've woken up feeling wet, my stuff is wet, I, I'm just not happy with it. Yeah, and so to rehash what's taking place as far as the weather goes. So the first night out it rained some, then slacked off, dried up, then last night started raining again. So every single night it's been wet, we've had it closed up, condensation is terrible. We don't know if the tent is leaking or if it's just condensation buildup. And it's interesting that we've had this experience. We just heard from a viewer who had the same question. He's like, is this tent leaking or is it condensation? I know for a certain this tent will leak in certain situations. We've heard from viewers who have experienced catastrophic leaking from the hubs. In my opinion, this is definitely not a waterproof tent by any means. In certain situations, it can leak. Condensation is really bad. Airflow is really bad. Quality control is really bad. It's pros 
it's a fairly good sized tent. Unfortunately, the company lied about the height. Mm -hmm. So we purchased this thinking that we could stand up in it based upon the given measurements. That's not true. It is incredibly solid in the wind, I'll say that. Like the way that the frame like pops out, once you stake it out, it's incredibly solid. Right, and I do feel that it feels sturdy. Yeah, it does. Even though we're talking about the poor quality, I'm not really feeling that the materials are super cheap and flimsy. It has a very sturdy feel about it. Yeah, there's two things that need to change. The quality needs to be better, right? And that means like the seams, like the stitching, that needs to improve. I throw all the holes where the bugs can get in into the same thing. That's just like the company overlooking things. That's a quality control issue in my opinion. So they need to fix that. Mm -hmm. They also need to fix those doors because as is, it's difficult for us to get in and out of this tent. If you're a larger person, I would say, forget about it. I would say, if you have mobility issues, forget about it. If this thing costs $150, I'd be like, okay. I can kind of overlook the issues because it's 150 bucks, but like retail 400, 300 on sale, I still don't see it. The price is a huge con for me. I want to see what else is out there. I want to see if there's something better, you know, just as much space, easy to set up, a better design. Mm -hmm. Airflow is really, really important. And that tent just does not have it. It doesn't. Moving our attention away from the tent, I have to say that I've had a fantastic time on this trip. Like, just hanging out with Susie here at Lone Wolf Mountain has been nice. The weather, for the most part, has been just amazing. Super warm, a nice breeze that was kind of cool. We've seen lots of wildlife. Like, this morning we woke up, we heard the deer <laughs> basically walking right <laughs> next to us. I think I said something to you and they took off running. Let's see, we saw rabbits, we saw that black racer snake. By the way, they do not chase people. That is a, an old wives tale. They can only slither about eight miles an hour, which is like a jog. I'm glad they don't chase people. <laughs> yeah, they are aggressive though, so don't mess with them. We've heard coyotes both nights. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Owls. Yeah. There were some interesting birds flying from the trees this morning, but I couldn't see what they were. I couldn't see close enough, but real vibrant colored. Mm -hmm. Overall, I would say it's been a fantastic trip, and I'm really glad that we decided to do it together because I think it was important to spend a couple of nights together in the gazelle because it is a large size tent, so most people are going to be using it with someone else. Right. I tried to set it up and manage it on my own so I could get that experience, but I'm really glad that it, it worked out like it did and yeah. we've really had a great three days out here. Three days. Oh, okay. Before we wrap this up, we have some shout outs to give. And the first shout out goes out to my buddy, Mike. Welcome back to the United States, pal. Tom, thank you so much for the barbecue sauce. We cannot wait to try that. Daniel, thank you so much for all of the coffee drinks and the coffee beans. In fact, I think we put it up. Some of the beans that you sent us, we've actually been using on this trip. So thank you so much, my friend. Jim, thank you so much for the Packlight Solar Phone Charger. That was the square-shaped light that we had inside of the tent. Jerry, thank you so much for the book, my friend. Cannot wait to read it. Jason, thank you so much for the tent. It's like a budget-friendly tent that we're going to test out. You're the man. Robert, thank you so much for all of the goodies that you sent me and for Susie. Mark, thank you so much for the coffee and for the hat for Susie. You did great. I love those colors. <laughs> <laughs> and Vissette, my buddy V, thank you so much for the oatmeal and the coffee. You two are the man. Good luck with your YouTube channel. I cannot wait to watch it. Let me know when your first video goes up. And I think that's it. I think that's it, but all of the viewers are awesome. The coffee grinder, everything that we use, it's because of you oh, all. Yeah. Everybody has sent stuff in over the years and we're still using it still. today. So it's really awesome. And <laughs> it also introduces us to things that I wouldn't necessarily think about yeah. bringing on a trip. So, you know, that just means we have more trips to plan because mm -hmm. we have more stuff to use. Speaking of the viewers, you all are the ones who basically dictate what we do. Every single adventure that we go on, every video that we do is based upon your recommendations. Take the Search for Bigfoot series. Like, that was your idea. You guys wanted it, I did it. It's been very interesting. 
Very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, we are going to say goodbye. This trip's coming to an end. We're going to finish up our breakfast, have some more coffee, break down that tent, get soaking wet, and then go home. And warm up. And warm up. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us on this trip. We appreciate you all. Take care. Be well. Strength and honor. Hit the like button before you go. It's important. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, folks. <laughs>